Public defender Mike Aspelin and co-counsel Craig Snyder represented Gilmore through his murder trial. They had never handled a first-degree murder case before. They filed a notice of appeal after his conviction, which would normally keep Gilmore alive as long as the case was being tested in court. But that's exactly what Gilmore does not want. So he fired the attorneys. So why are Esplin and Snyder going ahead with the appellate processes? We felt that uh, uh, even with that in mind, we still had the, uh, the duty to ensure that all the legal processes were, uh, were complied with. Duty to what? Duty to who or what? Duty to him as his uh, attorneys. But he doesn't want you as attorneys. That's correct. We are appointed by the court and until we're... Uh, so is it a duty to the court? A duty to the system? Or is it a duty to him? It's a duty to him, I, th I think, as well as possibly a duty to the, uh, the other entities you mentioned. For more than half of his 34 years, Gilmore has looked at the world from the inside of reform schools, county jails, and state penitentiaries. It's unusual to ask to be killed, all right, but perhaps he's had enough of prison life. With his record, death is about the only way out. Numerous psychiatric tests say he knows what he is doing, mentally competent to make the decision. Gilmore's fate now rests in the hands of the Utah Supreme Court. All five justices held an executive session today to decide if Gilmore had the right to die or if his attorneys had the right to keep him alive. It's a unique question, but the answer won't come until tomorrow noon. The justices are waiting to read a letter which Gilmore mailed to them today. If consistent with his attitude, the letter will ask the court to ignore the notice of appeal. If the Supreme Court does that, it may be the last hurdle before the country's first execution since 1967. Randy Ripplinger, Newswatch 2.